All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome back, all of you. Uh, thanks for staying so far into the conference this evening. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of a different uh, topic today, uh, building auto DevOps. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with auto DevOps or data DevOps. So we're going to talk a little bit on this new topic. May not be new for many of them, but this term itself is uh, new. Uh, before we go deep in, um, a little bit about uh, me. I'm uh, uh, Uma Mukara, co-founder, CEO at uh, MyData. It's a startup uh, uh, that uh, is behind two open source projects, OpenEBS and Litmus. Um, I primarily work on OpenEBS and Litmus projects, uh, uh, and then some of the passionate areas for me is uh, their data agility for stateful applications. That's what uh, our company is uh, behind. And then there's also another area that I uh, continue to work on is chaos engineering for Kubernetes. I'm available at uh, this uh, handle. Um, a little bit about our company, uh, who happen to be the sponsor of this show as well, uh, My Data. Our mission is uh, to deliver data agility on Kubernetes by using Kubernetes as a data plane, right? Um, so MyData founded OpenEBS project about three years ago. Uh, we donated it to CNCF. It's a CNCF sandbox project right now. Uh, we are still a key contributor of the project. There are many other contributors that are coming in. Uh, we are also a uh, sponsor of another project called Litmus, uh, which is a chaos engineering framework for Kubernetes. And uh, our commercial project or product is called uh, OpenEBS Enterprise Platform. Um, it's a, it's a, a package of uh, OpenEBS Enterprise Edition, Litmus Enterprise Edition, and Director. Um, so we also stand behind OpenEBS uh, to support enterprise customers. Right. Um, about uh, the key project, OpenEBS, um, it's uh, one of the leading projects in cloud native storage areas. Uh, we are probably uh, the leading uh, open source project for storage uh, on Kubernetes at the moment. Um, there are about uh, close to 2,000 Slack members, so we are proud of our, our community, very active community. And uh, we are post 1.0, it's about six months now. Um, hundreds of clusters being deployed every week on Kubernetes uh, on OpenEBS. Uh, so feel free to take a look at it and then join us on Slack. What are we doing this week apart from being at uh, this Rejects conference? Uh, we have uh, a technical workshop and meetup on Monday. Uh, at uh, just opposite to the convention center at uh, Hilton Gas Lamp, and you could go visit our uh, My Data IO, and top link is uh, register yourself. Drop by. Uh, we're going to run some real workshops on Kubernetes all day long. You can just uh, get a good hands-on on how to get started with Kubernetes, stateful applications, and everything. Right, and there's also a five side chat in the evening. Um, and we are at uh, booth SE23. Um, come, as, come to us, talk to about Kubernetes data plane, and also get a cap. You will be into a draw where at the end of the week uh, we'll be giving out a MacBook. Um, so feel free to uh, come and talk to us at uh, booth SE23. So about this session, what are we talking about? Um, we are primarily talking about uh, stateful application challenges in CI pipelines and how to really uh, tune this uh, CI pipelines and production clusters to a production grade, right? Um, so it also means, you know, once you tune the CI pipelines for uh, better, faster uh, efficiency, you are increasing the data agility in your old stateful applications, right? So we will talk uh, quickly about data challenges and then see how you can uh, go about solving them. Right. That's the first topic. Second topic is about um, uh, in order to increase your data agility overall, you need to have a resilient systems. Right. So how to find weaknesses quicker using chaos engineering. That's the second topic. So let's revisit the famous DevOps cycle, right? Everyone knows on the left side you have developers doing the development and on the other side operations is right? 
So uh, for stateless applications, it's pretty common. You know, what we do is uh, you build the app, you test it uh, through the pipelines, and then you deploy it, right? So this is pretty famous, uh, but when it comes to stateful applications, it's not the same, right? Running applications, the stateful applications in CA pipelines, there is a big difference. The primary difference is the data itself. Right? So the data is dynamic. As you run your stateless applications in production, the continuous thing that changes is the data. The data patterns, they change, and you want to be able to bring the data back to the CA pipeline so that you are actually running your pipeline on the real data or closer to the real data. So that's the big difference, and uh, that's what makes uh, this uh, chat that we are talking today about uh, w how to do the CA pipelines for your stateful applications, right? Um, so let's see the uh, first challenge. Uh, the first challenge is how do you actually bring the data pattern that continues to change in production back to your CA pipeline, right? So your application gets tested closer to the real data. And to see that uh, the production deployment, you will have uh, typically a stage deployment cluster, and uh, you will also have the CA pipelines. And uh, typically, these are deployed across multi-cloud scenarios where your pipelines will be running on one cluster, stage uh, on cloud or on-prem. Uh, your stage deployment will be on another cloud, and then your production is really on another cloud. So you guys must be knowing uh, this common name called pseudonymization, where the SREs take this data that's continuously changing and then replace the real data with some blank names, right? So that you can pull the data out from your production cluster uh, and then move it onto your staging, right? So that's a common thing to do, and that's what uh, SREs typically do, and we are not talking much about that. But let's assume that pseudo-anonymization is done and you have uh, the capability to get a pseudo data from your production cluster, right? And uh, how do you actually continuously update this data from your stage cluster to your CI pipelines, right? So you, you get tens of merge requests every day and you continue to see the data changing every day and how do you get this data onto your CA pipelines in an automated fashion. So that's the first challenge. The second challenge, I mean, this is a representation of the same thing, right? So you need to be able to not just once, but you need to be able to get the seed data uh, or pseudo data uh, from stage cluster to the CA cluster so that your pipelines run on uh, the latest uh, and the right data, right? So you need to be able to continuously do that uh, in an automated fashion. That's the first challenge. The second one is um, you're able to get the latest data and then pipelines are bound to fail, right? Because you continuously uh, put new code into that. And then um, whenever there's a pipeline fail, how do you actually give the state of the data to the developers so that they can go and uh, debug it very, very quickly, right? So that's another common challenge uh, that, uh, that you want to solve in order to get the CI pipelines to be more efficient. Otherwise, developers could take a long time um, or the wait for your ops team to give the right environment to debug, right? So just to summarize, um, the key challenges in data DevOps or auto DevOps is Make sure, making sure that the data is closer to the reality and also have an infrastructure in your CI systems or CI infrastructures uh, to give the environments to the developers very, very quickly once there is a failure, right? In the absence of auto DevOps, it typically takes, uh, you know, days, sometimes weeks in a complicated system uh, to reproduce uh, the environment and give it to the developers, right? So um, we're all moving to microservices to get more agility and having fix, uh, having them, this is used fixed is also very, very key, right? So how do we do that, right? So these two are the challenges and the way to solve them is really, um, what we are proposing here is use container attached architecture, storage architecture, that has the snapshots and clones features, right? So using snapshots and clones, you will be able to 
uh, solve these two challenges very easily, right? So the first challenge um, is get the pipelines to run on the latest data. And uh, how do you do that? Um, you, yeah, on your stage cluster, you have a process in such a way that you snapshot the data and move the data to the CI cluster and restore the data, right? So this, you have to be able to repeat it in a scheduled fashion, and that's what we call, in our language, uh, data migration as a service, right? So you have to be able to use the APIs and uh, in a declarative fashion, um, and then program your CI system in such a way that you continuously move your data, snapshot your data, move it to your CI system. Second one is also possible. Uh, the solution to the second one uh, will also happen using uh, the same snapshot and clones. So once the data that is brought in from your seed, seed data that is brought in from your stage cluster to the CA cluster, before you run your pipeline, you start, uh, I mean, you take the clone of the data and then run your pipeline. You know, there's a failure, you snapshot again because you want to preserve the stay exact state of the CA pipeline and then give it to your developers, right? Again, clone that failed uh, data instance and then give that data back to the developers. So if you can automate, it really means that, you know, the developer merges the code and it takes an hour or so to get your pipelines running and you're sure that the pipeline is running on the latest data. And if there is a failure, you automate again uh, you clone the data and then give it, give the environment back to the developer. So all this could happen within hours, right? And that's how you can actually save uh, days of effort um, in your DevOps uh, environment. And then that accelerates your entire DevOps agility and that's data agility, right? Um, so I think the slide is a little bit back, a little bit more about uh, you know how um, the C store uh, Sistor is one of the data engines of uh, OpenEBS, which is uh, best suited uh, if you are looking for snapshot and clones at the moment, right? And uh, it's a container attached storage architecture where um, the data plane runs everything within a container and it's easy to deploy. The snapshot clones capabilities of Sistor are following the well known Kubernetes APIs. I mean, we have the snapshot provisioners. Uh, to take the snapshot so you can programmatically um, uh, get the facility to take the snapshot. Uh, cloning is just uh, spinning up one more PVC, right? Um, so that's that's the way to get this done. And then, you know, I just want to take you guys through a little bit of demo. Uh, typical running of a pipeline takes, you know, uh, 15 to 20 minutes at the least, which we don't have time. So what I'm going to show is here, uh, the stage cluster is on Azure, and the CA cluster is on uh, GKE, the C data, and then I have my entire uh, CI running on um, GitLab, and we have an application called Mule Shop, uh, that's a stateful application that runs on uh, Kubernetes, right? So this is a Mule Shop application that runs on Kubernetes uh, on Azure. Um, and then I will probably show uh, a quick merge which will result in a failure um, of the pipeline and then uh, end result would be actually to take a clone of the data and then give the instance of the failed uh, application to the developers, right? So I have a recorded demo of that um, before we go to the second topic. So this is the uh, Git lab application uh, where m we are merging the code. Yep, I'm just trying to do that. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, talk through it. Um, there's a merge once it's done.
No, you can just put it back on. All right. So let's go back and uh, thank you, Philip. <laughs> so what we did uh, right here is uh, uh, merge uh, the code and uh, that instantiated a pipeline. And uh, what should ideally happen is um, it will kickstart the pipeline. And uh, uh, here I just want to show the, some of the working functionality of DMAS where uh, I have my production or seed application running on Azure, uh, which is in, um, in this cluster, and then there is a CI cluster on GKE. Um, so, so DMAS is data migration as a service uh, where your data is uh, snapshotted and moved to uh, a middle um, layer, data layer, or middle storage um, place such as uh, AWS. And uh, the AKS cloud, um, the application on AKS looks something like this, which is a real application. As you can see that uh, shopping cart, uh, which really means that there is a database around it. And then uh, this is, uh, this entire application is scheduled to be snapshotted and moved uh, to another um, uh, cluster, CA cluster, uh, which is on GKE. As you can see that the snapshots are uh, taken in a, in a periodic way, which is uh, efficient. You don't, uh, only incremental data is getting transferred. And uh, if you see some of the restores uh, that are done using uh, DMAS, you can see that this destination cluster is really uh, another cloud, right? So that's the primary difference. Using DMAS, DMAS is just a layer on top of uh, the Cisco snapshots and clones functionality, uh, but you get uh, the workflow that is required to achieve the data DevOps or auto DevOps. Um, so as you can see that uh, this uh, can be automated to continuously restore onto your CA cluster um, and then once that's uh, achieved, uh, you will have the functionality uh, to uh, go back to your uh, destination clusters. So, and then once that's done, um, you will have something like this. Uh, this is primarily what I wanted to show. This is one of the functional screens of our, uh, our director screens where your, uh, your data is snapped and then moved onto your CA cluster. And for the failed pipelines, you are actually going to take uh, one more snapshot and then clone the data and then give it back. So this is an example of um, once the pipeline fails, you clone it, and then you will, when developers actually can go and see that the application itself uh, is in a failed state. So they can go ahead and then uh, debug it, right? Um, in order to summarize that, let me actually put it. Uh, right. So the one that you see um, on the top uh, in the beginning is uh, the data that is uh, received from C data, it's called. Right, uh, the cylinder is your uh, uh, data that is received. And then for every pipeline, what you typically do is you actually snapshot uh, that so that till the next uh, seed data comes in, you work out of the snapshot, right? And for a successful pipeline, you clone the data and then you run. And for a failed pipeline, you again take the snapshot of uh, the data at the failed instance. And that's the debug instance, and you clone it, and then you give it back to your developers. So that's the key uh, of where you're using the snapshot fun clone functionality of CStore, both to move the data from your uh, uh, stage cluster to your uh, CI, as well as to give the data of uh, at the failed state to the developers. So that's primarily how you could achieve.
in the second one um, of the topic, second topic of the talk is how do you actually find weaknesses in this uh, stateful applications very quickly um, so that you know you increase the agility of uh, your DevOps environment. So a little bit introduction before we go to the demo. Uh, this will be a live demo, so hopefully the network uh, will stay up. Um, so failure testing in CI pipelines is generally not good enough, uh, and you need to continue to do your break things in uh, break things on purpose concept in production. And uh, the idea is uh, to find the weaknesses uh, in production, fix them, and then repeat the process. Right. So a typical way to do this is, uh, you know, uh, the usual engineering loop is you continue to observe the system when they are in production. And uh, the chaos engineering loop really is you don't wait for the failure to happen. You break the things and you continue to inject the faults unless the system, you tune the system and, you know, uh, you repeat that, right? So this is typically done on stage clusters and then pre-prod clusters and then you go back uh, to your uh, production cluster, right? So the whole idea is uh, you need to be able to uh, add more chaos tests, both in CI pipelines and in production. And uh, it's a well-known fact that with huge adoption of uh, these containers and uh, applications on Kubernetes, your code that you care so much is really 1%, right? So there's so much of code that's um, continuously changing on Kubernetes, you upgrade your Kubernetes, you just don't know whether that's really tested for your entire application. You always run your CI pipelines only for your application, right? So uh, Linux, we think it's pretty big stack, but it is still the least dynamic in nature. The most dynamic is uh, the stateful applications or the stateless applications that you're bringing in in a container uh, microservices model. So how do you achieve the resilience when so much of dynamism is involved is really the answer is chaos engineering. So that's uh, one of the projects that we uh, sponsor, which is a, actually you know, a side project that started uh, while uh, making OpenEBS resilient. So the interesting topic of uh, this is uh, just like we have CRDs for development, uh, we are introducing the CRDs for chaos testing. Uh, primarily, there are about uh, three CRDs chaos engine, experiment, and result. And uh, the beauty of this is if you're a developer, uh, you will have the same experience uh, that uh, you have for developing your application, just like creating a pod, create a PV, and if you want to inject chaos, you just write one more uh, object, uh, chaos engine, and then uh, refer to uh, your uh, experiments to uh, continue injecting chaos and find weaknesses. It becomes so easy, easy as you follow uh, the regular uh, Kubernetes native principles of development. Um, that brings us to, okay, these CRDs are nice, and where are the CRDs, this entire infrastructure? So that's litmus chaos. Um, it also introduces a new uh, concept, just like you know your Helm charts, we have chaos hub where chaos charts or uh, the hub is an idea of bringing the developers and SREs together, right? The developers of various applications where they put in their failure test cases into a litmus infrastructure, push them onto the hub, and then um, the SREs can actually pull them in and then use them in production, right? So resilience uh, on the left-hand side, as you increase, try to increase resilience in CI pipelines, you develop some good negative test cases, and then you move them to Chaos Hub so that your users, uh, once you ship your application, you, your users can continue to do negative testing in production as well, right? So what I want to show here is um, the famous uh, Kafka application. Uh, I have uh, uh, three replica Kafka running, right? Which is on OpenEBS local PV. Um, so I'm going to kill uh, one of the broker and show that uh, the producer, sorry, the, the bottom one is consumer, the data continues to run fine, All right? So here, um, this is a, a Convoy cluster uh, from Data IQ that's running on AWS. Um, so it's uh, good, and then uh, I have, a Kafka cluster with uh, three, and this is on watch. Let's see if, uh, yep. 
So uh, it does not have any uh, litmus at the moment and uh, I'll show that uh, it actually uses uh, OpenEBS. Um, the stateful application uh, is running on OpenEBS local PV host path. Um, what uh, my task here is actually to install litmus, kill one of the Kafka nodes and show that things continue to run fine, right? So let me uh, go by, uh, there, is, there is no litmus right now, no litmus namespace. So let me get that uh, litmus installed very quickly. So we have Litmus running and uh, chaos experiments are uh, nothing but uh, custom resources that are readily available for you on uh, Chaos Hub. I'll just uh, take, so this is the Chaos Hub. Uh, as you can see that there are multiple uh, experiments available for introducing chaos on Kubernetes and there's also a new experiment that is uh, introduced to do chaos on Kafka. There are multiple application uh, chaos experiments for OpenEBS itself, right? So I'm going to pull in um, a chaos experiment, uh, CR of Kafka onto this cluster. And then also I'm going to pull in, um, uh, create a service account so that I can just uh, give the permission to go and uh, Kafka service account is created. So as you, and then next step is really to go and annotate uh, the Kafka application to say that uh, we can introduce uh, chaos um, into that application. And uh, just to make sure that uh, I have the required annotation, as you can see that um, I have now annotated and um, next step is really create an ML file um, that, that says there is a chaos in GNCR that I need to create uh, and then refer to the experiment that I need to kill uh, Kafka and then observe it. So I have already uh, YAML that is uh, available and then I'm just going to uh, introduce chaos now. As you can see that there is a chaos runner that started and uh, in the next minute or so, you will be able to see that uh, one of the Kafka broker pods get killed and um, uh, the traffic continues to run uh, fine, right? So let me see the logs of uh, liveness check. It's still uh, not yet there. Uh, it takes about a minute or so before um, oh, the litmus engine starts running. So uh, before, while we go and do that, as you can see, um, doing such an experiment in a programmatic way to kill certain things and then observe uh, the post conditions of the application, everything is working fine or not, typically is a daunting task, right? And this is done by the developers of the application, not by the operations uh, team, right? So the whole idea of the hub is uh, let the developers develop this uh, complex test cases, push them onto a Kubernetes uh, platform, uh, a chaos platform, and then bring them in, right? So uh, that's, that's what's happening here. And uh, Kafka Linux check uh, is already starting. Uh, this is part of, uh, um, as you can see that now I'm pumping data into Kafka and then I'm receiving it. And uh, the next step of uh, the chaos experiment is it already started uh, killing, right? So it killed the broker, it's uh, starting, and then uh, we run this, I think, uh, for about uh, three times. Uh, that's what we have mentioned. Uh, in the, the entire chaos runs for about 60 seconds with an interval of 20 seconds, that is like three times. Um, so uh, it continues to run, right? Um, this is as easy as it can get in introducing chaos and making sure that um, your uh, application is running fine. 
and uh, there are multiple other chaos uh, experiments primarily for open ebs where you deploy open ebs or you use open ebs in ci you can use this chaos experiments to make sure that your stateful applications are really tuned uh, while using open ebs so that's the quick way that uh, quick way to introduce chaos and then um, making sure that it's done we've got about 5 minutes before the next talk yeah so these are the two scenarios i wanted to talk about i'm happy to take questions so what we showed yeah um That's okay. introducing synthetic data that is weird mm -hmm. in order to see the right So very good. Obviously, right? So you're uh, doing chaotic data. Um, we could write uh, an experiment like that. I mean, yeah. these are typically done by the database experts, right? So you know, as yeah. as Litmus framework uh, developers, we wouldn't know how exactly to write that. That's the whole purpose of creating this framework and hub. So yeah, I know, would be happy to uh, receive um, some PR onto a particular hub. Yeah, it's awesome. I'll make a note of it and probably will create an issue for that, right? So. Yeah, feel free to uh, use Open EBS, Snapshot APIs, and then if you are in the CA platform, uh, CA pipeline building business, um, you will see a lot of advantages in using these APIs to get this advantages of um, you know running faster pipelines and making sure that you run them on the latest data. Right. All right. So we'll be available outside this hall, and then uh, happy to take any questions. And then again, we are on Slack. Feel free to uh, drop by our booth, SC23. We're available. The entire team is available for the entire week. Right, so. Thank you very much.